Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'd like to introduce myself first. I'm Jackie King and I'm the founder of If Everyone Cares and the creator of Adoddle.org. And next to me on my screen to my left is M Flint. And M is one of my amazing support workers because I'm neurodiverse and she's the most incredible support to me. And I'll get her to introduce herself in just a second. But before that, I'm going to introduce you to Isla, who is our main speaker for today. And Isla is one of our incredible Kickstart trainees and the most amazing graphics person. And she has put together the presentation today, which we're doing, which is slightly different. Well, yeah, and her head gets big every now and again. So we need to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but yeah, so Em, would you like to introduce yourself? And then Isla after that, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure, yeah, thanks, Jackie. Um, so my name's Em Flint. Um, I wear lots of community hats um, and I first met Jackie at a community event uh, about four or five years ago now and um, we were at a suicide prevention training event and we got chatting in the kitchen and found that we had an awful lot in common um, and I thought well I would really like to support a doggle and um, so I now support Jackie personally as the founder of a doggle um, in her work and um, I also help out with a little bit of PR and social media and community development work um, so yeah, anything I can do to help a dog, I think it's a, a wonderful organisation. So that's me. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, so. Over to you, Isla. Hi, um, I am the graphics and branding person at Adoddle. Um, I started working here around, I guess, six months ago now, fifth month in. I'm actually a Kickstarter trainee, um, so that that's going to be finishing up soon. But um, I've been sort of looking at, I've been doing the headers um and i've been looking at awareness days i've just been kind of updating a lot of the graphics here um it's been a lot of fun um and we've been, we're going to be introducing a new mascot today so uh that's something else that i've been working on so yeah fantastic isla just um under exaggerated what she does and what she's been doing with us. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get another workshop from her before before her time with us finishes to maybe look at things like branding or, or even our mascot. So what I'd like to do now is hand the floor over to Isla and ask Isla if she would like to share her screen. And while she's just starting to share her screen, I'll explain that we're not gonna be doing death by PowerPoint. We are actually going to be doing the whole presentation in Canva and Isla has done her presentation slides in header shaped um, slides so that you can sort of see how to do it. So Isla, over to you. Sure, um, I hope that you can all see this well and it's all going smoothly. Um, so today I guess I'll be taking you through um, how to make your header in Canva. Canva is free. Um, we're gonna be handing out some templates um, at the end so you can sort of try yourself and uh, yeah let me let me just take you through this um, so uh, Jackie do you want to go through some housekeeping first completely forgot about that of course I will no problems at all okay so a little bit of housekeeping this event is being recorded today so if you have got any questions you've got two choices you can either raise your hand and we can bring you up on the stage as a speaker and you can ask your question that way or you can type your question in the chat and both Em and myself will be keeping an eye on that and we will ask questions because it's just a relatively small group of us today if you've got questions as we're going along, please do ask them because Em and I can ask them for you as Isla's explaining everything. Health and safety. Obviously, this is an online event. We don't know where your fire exit is. We don't know where the first aid box is and everything else, but we hope that you do know for you. We are using AirMeet today, which is an amazing platform. And at the end of this session, when it's not being recorded, you can actually jump out and come into a virtual lounge and meet us on one of the tables to ask us any questions. If you've got any you want to ask outside of the recorded session. At the end of this session, there's an opportunity for questions and answers. And we will also then give you our contact details so that you can get in touch. And also at the end of the session, we will share with you a link so that you can actually access the templates here to create your own header for your own profile on a doddle. Thanks. Back to you, Isla. Sure. So first of all, I'm going to 
to say this uh, a picture tells a thousand words and this is actually really important because you can do your headers uh, you know a thousand and one different ways uh, depending on uh, how you want to represent your organization or your charity um, don't let that be really intimidating though because at the end of the day if you want to use one of the templates that i've provided that's absolutely fine um, and the whole point of this is to make sure that it you know it's really accessible to for everyone it doesn't matter where you are with your branding it doesn't matter if you have a logo maybe you have everything there everything sorted and this might be really simple and easy for you um, but first, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of the headers that I've done. Um, these all happen to be stuff that I've done really early on. Um, so there's this one and we got the diversity project. These are all kind of, you know, um, creations from their own logos that they provided, a bit of text from maybe they maybe have a website, it's been from their website and a bit of kind of just random sort of abstract graphics to pull everything together. Um, and the last one we've got Waymakers. So it's really um, sort of diverse in the way that you want to do it. You can have it uh, text-based, image-based. Um, if you really want, you can literally just have a massive image and no text, no explanation. Uh, it really is up to you. So um, like I said before, we understand that if you're at all, you, you know, you're all going to be at different stages with your branding. Um, so you can either use these directly or as inspiration. And I also have a blank canvas for anyone who just really wants to crack on, maybe you really wants to be experimental with a header. And first of all, this is Oscar. Uh, he stands for Opportunities Supporting Connected Communities and Awareness of Resources. Um, so whenever you see him, that means it will be a guide, basically. So there will be steps for you to take um, at the beginning and the end. Or if you get stuck, he'll be there to help and just guide you through the whole process. Um, one big thing before you start is uh, making sure that you don't just take any random graphics or images of Google Images because you don't know whether they are free to use or not. Um, you could be kind of caught in some legal trouble that might end up in fines if you are not careful. Um, but that's where Canva comes in to help because uh, everything on here that you can access will be free to use. So um, that, that's kind of another reason why we're here on Canva today. So um, using your template, easy as one, two, three. Number one is selecting the template you want to use. Number two, making your changes, and I'll show you how to do those. And number three will come later. So let's have a go. So um, when you get the template link, um, you will have a very similar template um, uh, document. Uh, so what you can do, if you don't wanna go directly onto it, there's a button that's to duplicate the page. And if you click on it, that means if you make an absolute mess of this and you still want to use this template, you can go back to it really easily. Um, so I'm just gonna teach you how to use Canva basically now. Um, so let's say this one, you're a charity that helps the homeless. Um, here, I'm gonna show you how to change this. This is literally just an image. So if you go over to elements, um, they have a massive selection of graphics and just shapes and animations um, and photos in this selection. So let's type in homeless and see what comes up. So you could use any of these. Let's see what this icon does. Let's get rid of this, put this up here. Isla, how did you get rid of the first icon that you got rid of? What did you do to get rid of that? Sure. Um, when you select it, it will come around with this purple box. And I literally just clicked backspace. I'm sure delete will do the same. Okay. Um, and there's also a little bin up at the top, isn't there? So you can click it. And at the top, just under the share button, there's a little bin there that will help delete it as well. That's true. Um, this is... this. Um, image is quite good on the basis that you can actually change the color here. Um, so 
for example, these are just the colors that I have in here already, but you can come into here, this little plus icon, and it's, it's just kind of, you select whatever color you want um, for your charity, I guess. And if you come into here, so I've got a text box here, you can access the text by this little text icon here. Um, and you'll be able to just, it'll plop itself on literally like this and you'll be able to write in it straight away. So how to change it from here would be you double click, um, you can get rid of the text or you can just highlight it. Um, it's literally like Word, any, any other program you'd use and you'd come into this little drop down here and they have a massive library of text options as well. So um, let's say you want Open Sans because that's similar to your font. Um, obviously they, they won't have everything. So um, it's either you could, I'm, I'm not too sure about downloading your own text. Oh, you can upload a font there, there you go. Um, but you know, if you wanna just find something similar to um, what you have in your own website or maybe you just, you don't have the font. So that's absolutely fine. And we'll put in here, help, um, for example. Um, so that's that. You can use this and you can embellish it however you want. Fantastic. Uh, so Isla, with the text that's there, you showed us that we could change the colour of the text on the icon. Can you change the colour of the text as well as the font that you're using? And what about the size of the, the font? Oh, absolutely. So um, if you click on this, you'll have all of these options up here. So um, again, if you want to come down here, some really sort of wavy, wacky fonts, if you want, um, you can literally come up here and type, I'm pretty sure they have uh, Hel Helvetica-ish, if you want Helvetica, for example. Um, and over here, you can use the plus and the minus as a really simple way to just kind of adjust your text. You can also just drag this, um, which will automatically do it for you. Um, if you come over here, same process as the icon, um, you can select whatever color you want. And there is a bold option. It's literally just going back into kind of word and how you would use that some um text options do not have a bold option so if this is kind of blanked out that that's the reason why um underline and you can change the casing of your letters as well just by clicking this button which is really useful um and there is also an alignment so obviously it's not going to show anything here but um you can just align it to the left the middle and the right and um, i'll show you that on a later slide that will probably be a little bit more effective so and, yeah and there's a question that's just coming to the chat which is um if you've got branded colors so if you're a charity or an organization that has a branding suite um and you you're supposed to use a particular you know hex or an rgb um is there a way to do that in canva sure um this might also be a question for jackie but i'll show this first so when you come into here, you are able to put your hex code in here. So when you type that in, it will come up as the color that you want. Um, but in terms of branding guidelines and um, selecting your own sort of branding, as you can see here, we've got all the sort of colors that we have here for our branding. I'm not too sure how to go about that because um, I believe Jackie did that. That's okay. So I can give you a little bit of a hint on that. So if you're an organisation that is a charity, a community group or organisation, and you haven't already got an account with Canva, or if you've only got one of their free accounts, you can actually apply for a pro account for free as a non-profit charity, community group or organisation. It takes a few weeks to do. But once you've got a free account with them, you get the pro account, which then enables you to actually have your branding deck of colors in there. So you can actually put your pre preset colors for your branding. You can put your font in there. So we did upload our font, which our second font is called Handley, which wasn't in the system. So we did upload our font. 
You can also say what font sizes you want for things. So just now, Isla, you clicked on the text button at the side or to the left in the black bar down the left hand side. Yep. And can you see that it says add a heading, add a subheading, add a little bit of body text? We were able to set those to be the um, sizes that we wanted for those things so that it could happen really quickly. So I'm happy if there are organisations out there who maybe have got a pro account but didn't know they could do that or are applying for one, I'd be more than happy to run a workshop on how you can set up your own um, organisation branding kit on Canva. You can add your logos, you can add all sorts of things to make it easy. Then you can invite team members, up to 10 team members, and they've got all of those things automatically that they use whenever they're making your graphics for you. So it actually makes actually helps to make it really easy. That's great. I can see thank yous in the chat. So it looks like we've covered everything there. Thanks, Isla and Jackie. That's great. I'll go on to the next one then. Um, please do interrupt me because I can't see your faces. So I don't know whether you're about to talk or not. <laughs> I just have to say that. Um, so let's say for the second one, you are supporting Ukraine. You're a charity supporting Ukraine. Um, so this time I'm going to tell you how to, I guess, use um the shapes and put images down and again we can change this logo to match ukraine supported one so if we go into elements again uh let's get a photo first so ukraine it's really simple um another one you can use is a blue and yellow um so if there's nothing that you want there you can also be quite creative with it let me zoom out for a second let's just use a flag here it's literally just a drag and drop thing um, or oh, first of all, if you want to narrow it down, go to photos, if you want something like this, um, let's drag and drop and that will literally go in just like that. Um, you can still move it about. So it's not fair. So Isla, this is using this template that you've done here. So mm -hmm. if any, so we're going to give a link to this so that everybody has got access to these templates and can choose one that they want to use if they want to and this mm -hmm. is how they make changes to it yeah yeah absolutely um and again you don't have to use these templates if you want to use these templates as a base and add stuff on top that's absolutely so like imagine just as a thing we didn't duplicate this page so we're now making a change to the master yeah. How would I, I've done something and I want to undo it because I suddenly realise that's what I've done. How would I undo an action? Sure. Um, so there's this little arrow up here, um, okay. which you can press. And or there is also command or control Z. But let's just use the button for the sake of it. Um, that was a very good point. I didn't duplicate the page. Um, so yeah really simple i don't know if there's a, a maximum amount of undos you can do before it just completely stops um you can also redo uh whatever you want with this arrow here so it's it's really simple to go back on a mistake um there's plenty of times where i've kind of messed with a master template and thought no i was meant to duplicate the page so that's absolutely fine um so sure here we go thank you and I'm going to show you how to change these lines. Um, so obviously Ukraine flag, maybe you, you want these lines to be yellow and blue. So if you come over here to your color picker tool, this is really good um, because obviously, as you can see, you can use it here. But you can drag this across. So if you have um, multiple windows open, uh, maybe you have two screens, you can literally drag this onto any other web page um, as well. So you're not just limited to um, the graphic that you have in Canva that you can color pick from. If you have um, the way that I do it with other, you know, if I if I get an organization that has really specific branding, um, I will go to their website, I'll see what colors they use. And with this color picker tool, that's how I can get the header in line with their branding. Um, so this, this is literally just a giant square, by the way. Um, so again, let's change this. So we go over to graphic. Let's change this Adodle logo here to, let's just say we want this bird. And it's literally, again, you don't have to drag it. You can literally click on it and it will come onto the page. And we can enlarge it. 
so when you moved it, all you're doing is you're clicking on it and then holding your mouse down on it to move it? Yeah, it, it's literally as simple as that. It really is. Um, it's it just click and drag. That's kind of what Canva is. Um, there, there's, there really is not anything else to it. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's famous last words for me. I'm always the one who's ditzy in the back of the room thinking, how do I do that? Even though I use tech every day. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's see what I've gone down here. I've got notes. Um, so. Yeah, in the chat. Sorry to interrupt, Isla. Just another question that's coming in in the chat. Because um, as we're doing all of this great work, I know I'd be worried about losing it. So the question is, do you have to save your changes anywhere or does it save them automatically? So Canva will save them automatically. Um, if you want to set up a document, which probably would have been a really good place to start actually. Uh, up here, there's a little box here when you highlight it, it's not that obvious. This will say untitled um, when you first go onto a fresh canvas. But if you're going on the template here, if you're clicking clicking the link, it will have this as the tem uh, as the title, uh, maybe a copy of um, a Doddle Headers workshop. Um, so what you can do here is highlight it, backspace it, and then you just type in your name there. Um, and that that's kind of it. it, it will automatically save. I think this kind of tells you all changes are saved. So this will obviously have dots um, when it's kind of auto saving or updating. So there's literally, you really don't have to worry about it. Oh, that's great. So you can you can play around and it'll it'll save, it'll remember what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, if you need to answer the door or make a cup of tea, it'll still be there when you come back. That's good to know. <laughs> okay, so next one. Let's duplicate this. So these are frames. Um, you can get frames from the elements and they should have a section here. So here's the box frames. I think if you go down the list here, there will probably be frames as we can select it up here. Let's select it. Um, and they'll have many different um, shapes of frames, like literally, again, I think they have numbers, computer screens, they have little photos. So again, really kind of wide selection up to you. And what frames do is that you can Let's go back into photos. Let's select, say, your charity with food aid. Food. If you have photos, this won't do it for graphics, but if you have photos, you can again literally just drag and drop um, into these. So if you if you have your own photos you want to use, you can literally just drag and drop. These look really tasty. <laughs> um, this is a bit more restauranty than kind of food aid charity work, I will admit, but it's, it's a good example. Um, and say you don't like a placement of whatever's in here, these spoons clearly are off screen. If you double click, you can drag and then press done. If you don't like it, as you saw, there was also a cancel button up here. Um, so you can also, you can resize as well whilst in here, you, you can do all of that stuff. Um, so if you have, say you want to upload your own photos because you don't want to use anything that's here, you have your own photos, that's fine. Um, there's an upload button here, um, and you can upload your own media. So if you press this, um, it won't share if I, if I press this, um, cause it's recording the tab. But if you press this, it will go up to your um, files on your computer and you can upload them there. But also, again, you can literally just drag and drop. Um, it's like similar to OneDrive, say. Um, and yeah, you can just literally select all of these. So the charity here, it's kind of, there you go. So it's the same principle. So you can really make it personalized for yourself. Okay. So you talked about those frames. So those circles there, then Isla, mm -hmm. you showed us the other shapes. So all of those are the same as this. Some, they are a frame. So the ones that have got like the, the, the green landscape and the clouds and the sky, all of those are ones you can put position into your template mm -hmm. and you can then add a photo to it and the photo will take that shape. Yes, it will have to be a frame though. And unfortunately, um, if for whatever reason, maybe you don't have um, the selection for frame here. If you type in frame, 
Um, I don't think too many of them will come up. Oh, no, they do come up. Um, a lot of the time you might get photos of frames which will not work. These won't work. Um, it has to be the one with the landscape in, um, and that will be that. You can't do that with shapes either. It has to be a frame. Okay, thank you. Cool, right. Let's go on to the next one. So here, this is kind of just little tips and tricks, I guess now. Um, so these are really abstract shapes. Um, so depending on what you want your vibe to be, um, these uh, are kind of, I just type in blobs. <laughs> blobs are my favorite kind of shapes, as you can see, kind of just really abstract. Um, you can do this for waves and brush strokes. So maybe you have an art group. If you type in brush, it'll be brush strokes. Um, so you can select all of these different types. Like the idea of the, what I'm showing you here is that you can type in practically anything and something will come up um, that you might want to be able to use. Um, so don't feel like you're limited to just image based stuff. Um, you can really sort of change how you want things to look with um, different graphics and abstract shapes. And with those shapes, you can then the majority of the time change the colorings. Yes. So, for example, here, let's duplicate the page again. So this one, some you can, some you can't. If you can, it will come up here um with the little box here in whatever color it originally um comes in and you can just change the color again the same sort of principle here so yes um also what would be a really good opportunity to show you on this graphic actually would be the alignment of the text, which I wanted to show you earlier, but obviously that was a really bad example. Um, so we have a nice big body of text here. Say you want it left aligned, you click this little box here and it left, align, left aligns it. So maybe you want to match this up to this. Um, that's fine. Again, right align it. I wouldn't suggest doing this. Um, and then back to center align. Um, so that's really sort of that that can change how something looks or how you want something positioned or how much you want to fit on um, to a graphic. So that's quite good. Um, thinking, thinking about the positioning of text on a page, say you wanted to make sure something was definitely in the centre of the page or something like that. Is there a way of doing that? Right. So if you come here, that's really good. I was about to forget that completely. So this position tool is literally one of the most amazing things. I'll show you other examples of it as well later. Um, so position, you have a line to page. So this is your page here, this little canvas here, and you can align it to the middle. So as you see there, not very well because of the, the tabs in the way, but um, it aligns to the center of the canvas and let's go center here um it lines it again to the center here and left top bottom right so you can if it, that's a really simple way so um to get symmetry because it's the worst thing ever to kind of look at it from afar after you've finished it and think that's not that's not quite right um, because I'm someone who's really picky when it comes to things being aligned properly um, because I feel like it throws off things completely. Um, and it also, Sorry. You, you had that lovely little pink line that showed just now when you were moving your box. What was what was that about? I was just about to mention that. Um, sorry. <laughs> so this Canva can get this right, but it also can get this wrong sometimes. Um, so as you can see, it's trying to align the text to the line that I have here. So it will automatically kind of snap to the line. So if you do have something like a line or maybe it's the logo up here, it will try to align it for you um, with those guides. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, there are also little, as you can see, there's some numbers on the screen. If you want to be really particular about it, um, these basically measure the distance um, between um, the gaps of the different objects on the screen. So this logo, um, not the logo, but the text. So the text box is the same width 
as this text box below. Um, I'm showing stuff with my hands, but obviously you're not really going to see that very well. Um, so yeah, there's also that. Um, again, Canva can get it really wrong sometimes, but it can also get it right, which is really good. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Right, next one. This one's a really simple one. I'm going to show you how to use the transparency tool. Um, so these are just two Adodo logos in the background. Um, this here is the transparency tool. So as you see, I have it at 20%. I'll put it up to 100%. Super bright. Um, but maybe like the here, if I had these both on a hundred percent, it would really take away from the text, but we don't want that. So you can drag it down, but also you can just type in a number here and it will automatically go to that transparency. Um, sure. And here we've got the frames again. So there's a tool, I'm going to really mess this one up. So let's duplicate that. So I'm going to just move these boxes because I'm going to show the tidy up tool. I'm going to get rid of this text as well. Um, so we have all of these. They're all different. They're not, they're not, you know, spaced out correctly, not evenly at all. So if you want to select all of them, so you can either, when selecting all objects, you either want to drag your mouse or trackpad over all shapes and they will all select or um, you can press them individually plus shift and they will all be selected here i don't think there's any other way to do it i'm not too sure um, if you go to position they have e space evenly which literally is the most amazing thing ever so they have a vertically option, they have a horizontally option, and they also have a just a tidy up. Um, so if you want to tidy up, that's how you do it. You just press it and it's all it's all tidied. Um, let me go back and let's see the so you've got one down here for whatever reason. Um, position and you want it tidied up vertically. That hasn't done it very well. Horizontally, tidy up. There you go. Tidy up's just the best. Um, so you can do it whatever way you want, whatever fits. Again, like I said before, sometimes, you know, I, I wanted to tie it up vertically, but Canva didn't really respond too well to that. Um, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So don't get frustrated if it doesn't work first time around. Um, there's always other options like the tidy up tool that I just used. I love that tidy up tool. I wish I could do that in my office, just click a button and have all of my filing done. That would be amazing. Um, another question in the, in the chat, Isla. We'd, we'd be billionaires, wouldn't we, if we could invent that? Um, another question in the chat is, what do the forward and backward buttons mean under position? Um, we got a little glimpse of those just then when you were showing us the tidy up tool. Forwards and backwards. Okay, that's a really good point. I haven't shown that yet. So let me grab a couple graphics here. So we got here and 100% vegan food, why not? So we've got two graphics here. As you can see, one overlays the top, and again, like text, for example, they're all sitting on top of each other. Say you didn't want this on top, you wanted this graphic on top, knife and fork and spoon. I think that's a fork and a spoon, I'm not too sure. Um, so you can bring this forward by clicking this forward button. As you see, it lies on top, and again, backwards, takes it back. Um, so you can, if you have something, because a lot of the time when you're placing stuff down on Canva, it will just guess whether you want it on top or not. So again, it's just automatically put the text on top. Um, maybe I don't want the text on top. Maybe I want this one on top, but maybe I do want the text on top. Maybe I want this uh, behind the line. So um, you can put it behind the line, backwards, forward one, it's going on top of the line, but you still want it on top of the text, forward again. Um, that's just how those work. Let's get rid of these. So I hope that was a good explanation. I'm not too sure. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Simon. Cool. And we're on to our last one here. So this is an image. And what I'm going to show you here is basically how I can set it as the background um, rather than just say you plonked an image on a page and it's not saying as a background. So we want these spoons again. Um, well, either if you want to use the template, you can drag and drop, I think, maybe, 
I don't think it wants to do it now. It's, there oh, it, is. it does. Sorry, my computer's been really slow. Um, you can drag and drop. I think I took it up to an edge and it did that automatically. But um, I'm not going to assume that we can do that. Um, if that does happen accidentally, by the way, if you if you don't want the, um, an image as a background and does that accidentally, you can right click and detach image from background. And because sometimes I'm always fighting with Canva when it does that, because I, I drag and drop, I never click uh, for some reason. So I'm always doing that. Um, but as you have here, maybe you do want it as background, you click on it again, right click, set image as background. And like before with the frame, you can double click this and you can move it around however you like, you can enlarge it. Um, and make it smaller it, it will not it will always set itself to um uh, the the borders of the canvas so you can't make it smaller um so you will have to det detach the image if you do want to do that brilliant thank you um and let's go that we also have a blank canvas here for anyone who just wants to get on with it um with all of the methods that i've shown you today maybe you want to just jump into elements see what they have maybe you've got logos that you want to upload you didn't like any of the templates um maybe it just doesn't represent your brand at all that's absolutely fine um just kind of go experiment and have fun i'm kind of in canva all day just seeing what's about so just really go for it i guess um jack is there anything that you want to, me to cover or you want to say before i go on to, to teaching how to upload stuff and i download? can just see that there's another question there that says does canva have any templates that they can try sure so there's a template box at the top um, so Canva will naturally, whether you select a Facebook um, template or whether you have um, a book template, obviously you're here for the headers, but maybe you want to make some social media posts later. Um, they will automatically come up with a selection of templates themselves. So um, if you have images here that you can select and choose from and those will add themselves onto the pages. And of course, because they're templates in Canva, that means you're not going to get into trouble if you're using any of those graphics because Canva's giving you permission to use them. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, you can chop and change these just exactly the same as the what I've shown you how to do before. Um, so if, yeah, again, because I quite like these ones, I really like the simple ones so that they have here. Again, literally, if you just want an image as your header, that's like A-OK. -okay. Like it's all about you representing your brand. So there's literally no sort of strict rules on how to do it, um, but yeah. OK, brilliant. Cool, so should I go Thank on to the next step? I don't yes. know. Yes, wonderful. Cool. Okay, so downloading and uploading to your profile. I'll do the downloading bit. Jackie can do the uploading bit because I don't know anything about that. Um, so we've literally got the set of instructions here with um, little screenshots. So click share, it's up here. And there's a little download button down here. Yep. Uh, let's scroll down. So when you click download, we select this, you will have options of your file type. They should already be in the right setting, so you shouldn't have to do anything, but it's always good to check. So you want as a PNG as you'll be uploading it to the website. Um, you do not want a transparent background ticked. It should be the right size. It should be this size. And um, selecting your pages, it's just this drop down and whatever template you used or whatever page you have done your um, header on, you will see that here and you will be able to tick one like this and it will have page nine and then you'll be able to download and that will go straight to your files in your computer your downloads okay brilliant and so now uploading your profile um i'm going to keep it on this screen and i'll just talk you through it when you are in your profile you will see down the left hand side that there are a number of different tabs and you can tell which tab you're on because it becomes the turquoise color. And so there is one that says design. 
if you click on the design tab, one of your options then is to upload your own feature image and you will see the second little box that says choose your file. So you select that file, that, that, that document that you've just downloaded, your header, and you choose that. And then you can either click save straight away. But if you've actually got a main brand color, do you remember what we were just doing in Canva just now with being able to select your color? You will see another little box which has got the purple bar in it that you can see just underneath. You can either select a color, so you can click on it and it will bring up that color, that sort of the color wheel. You can select any color. Or if you've got a hex code, a branding code that you need to use, you can type that in there. And then that will give you that as your other main branding color on your profile as well. And then all you do is click save and that will make your profile header and brand your profile to your organization. It really is as easy as that. Um, have fun. And if you've got any questions, I'm just going to type um, a, an email in there. And actually, I've just put a link in there for the templates here that are in here. And it has all these reminders in there for you as well. OK, but I'm just going to put an email address in the box. Um, and we will also it helps if I spell the email address, email address properly. <laughs> Dyslexic. Duh. Um, and you can get in contact there. Now, Isla, I am hoping that I am going to. So one of the things we haven't talked about here is actually you can work with your team on a, a project um, like this. Oh, wow. Can you see at the top? There's an S that's just come in there. Well, actually, that's me. I know my name begins with J, but it, it comes up as an S because it just does. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the very bottom of this document. And I'm hoping that what you'll see in a second, she says, trying, I'm just scrolling all the way down. A few pages. <laughs> Look, can you see there's a page added there? Okay. And I am going to put, there is the link for you. So that if you're watching this on a recording afterwards, you, have, you can see what that link is for being able to get that header template. And I'm also going to go across I'm going to add a little bit of text. I'm going to add a subheading. I'm going to move that one down. So can you see both Isla and I are in this document at the moment? And I am going to go hello at adoddle.org. There you are. And you have now got the email so that you can um, get in contact with us if you want to with any questions. And that just shows how you can actually all work together collectively. One of you could be working on one sample, one could be another. Tomorrow morning, we've actually got our own team session where we're looking at our mascot, Oscar. And we're all going to be working on um, Facebook posts to have a look to see how we can introduce him. And then one of those posts we're going to actually put in our newsletter for next month. But it's a nice way to get the team working together as well. But has anybody got any last questions? Because I know we promised it would be about 45 minutes. And because we had a little bit of a delay at the beginning, because something didn't go quite right with me setting up um, Airmeet, um, for which I apologise again. Um, we're just running a couple of minutes behind. So what we will do in a minute for Q&A is we're going to jump back out to the tables so that we can do those off the recording. But we'll finish this recording now unless anybody's got any urgent questions now. No, no questions. But I would just like to say I know a little bit about Canva, but I've learned such a lot, Isla, from this, this tips and tricks all over the place that I've never used. And tidy up is my new favourite thing. So thank you. Oh, no problem. Cool. I want to say a huge thank you to Isla. This is Isla's first workshop that she's run. She has put together everything for this, your templates and your document and everything else. She also built Oscar. Can you just go back up one slide, um, Isla? So you see Oscar, and I don't know if you've noticed that at different times he's got one wing up or he's got both of his wings out or whatever else. This is Oscar and Isla has created our mascot for us. And I'd love to see if I can get her to do a workshop before she leaves, just to talk you through what she did about creating a mascot. There you are. I've put her right on the spot now. She's only got another couple of weeks with us. And um, yeah, we're desperately trying to find some funding because we would really like to keep her on. Um, when you get a good one, keep her. And hey, if any of you are watching now and thinking we're going to steal her out from underneath Jackie, um, excuse me, 
okay, it's Isla's life, Isla's choice, but they are, look, I told you her head got bigger. She's just had to move back on the chair oh, so it didn't take up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Thank you, gosh. <laughs> I want to say thank you very much to everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, do let us know if there are any other workshops that you'd like us to do. We're planning on doing at least two workshops a month from here on in, one which will be helping organisations to create their first profile. And the other one each month will be about something to help you make the most of your profile or help you with tools and tips and things like that. So do let us know. Thank you very much, Em, for joining us. Thank you so much, Isla. And thank you, each of you, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Oh, I've got to find my mouse now so that I can end the session. <laughs> That's what comes of having three screens. Bye.